Hey everyone, in this video we're going to show you what not to do in a skid steer. The top mistakes we've seen. Check it out. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to show you top mistakes we've seen new operators do. Uh, so if you've seen, this is not a how-to video, this is a, kind of the opposite of that. Uh, it's going to be more of top five things I've seen, uh, and again, my own opinion on that. So as I've said with all my videos, I'm not an expert out here. I'm just kind of sharing what I've seen and what I've heard. I love, I, what I like about these videos, generally you will comment below on some of the top mistakes you've seen. So please comment below and maybe we'll add it to a future video. A couple things I want to give a shout out up front to Precision Landscape and Construction here in Hastings, Minnesota. They really helped us out with getting us a machine uh, as far as Frontier Ag and Turf in Hastings uh, was able to help out with the skid steer, um, so we appreciate that. Now, uh, the site, we've already done the site, the pre-op inspection on the machine itself. We have a separate video on that that I can link above, uh, as well as I already know the site. I didn't need to do any uh, utility locates because we're on the same site, but those are obviously very important. So let's go ahead and get right in the cab. Okay, so once you're in, First thing, seat belt. Okay, we are running a John Deere 325 skid steer here. Uh, again, this is not going to be, we have a separate video on how to operate a skid here. we got several of them. So uh, if you're looking, I'm not going to go over any controls here, more of the, I'm just going to share, I kind of had to go down the top five mistakes I think I've seen, but again, that always is changing. So I'm interested to hear your perspective, but with this machine, I'm going to go ahead and get it going and then we're going to go over the first one. So number one. As I think you'll hear with a lot of my videos, most of, a lot of these are safety related. By the way, the John Deere does have a backup camera. I don't know if you can see up here, but obviously backing up, you always wanna make sure you're careful. Uh, number one is just center of gravity, uh, traveling with that bucket too high. Uh, skid steers actually, I think they give a false perception of safety because they're smaller. So I hear a lot of people think, oh yeah, skid steer, it's a small machine, it's safe. And it's, it's scary to me how easy it is. Someone can go rent these off the street like a weekend warrior. Uh, but you can get in a lot of trouble in a skid steer because they're so small. You know, a bigger machine has a lot more uh, base to it, a lot more weight, so it's tougher to tip. These are very easy actually to flip. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna go up here. So a loaded bucket. So with this, you generally want to be low and tight to the ground anytime you're traveling with a skid steer. So you should, you want to be off the ground just enough so you're not dragging the bottom of it, but you don't ever want to be up high. So what you'll see here, you'll see operators either scooping it right away or traveling like this. If you're traveling any distance with this thing up in the air, it is extremely easy to flip over a skid steer. And this is primarily the way people will do it. And again, I can do, if I go off this side and go at an angle here, anytime just flipping this thing going forward, going backwards, very easy to get this thing flipped over. So anytime you're above your head, that's a danger zone. So that's the, even if I go backwards fast here, you'll see how my front end, that whole thing, I felt the whole thing back up like that. So the only time you generally want to be low and tight to the ground, like this, so this is the ideal. Traveling around low and tight to the ground like this, and then as you're coming up to wherever you need to dump it, that's when you're gonna start pulling this thing back and raising it up. It should only be right as you're getting ready to dump, and only go as high as you need to dump. probably the number one way you're going to get in trouble in a skid steer. Anything above your, I mean, if it's up near your head at all, you're in a high position. So it, if you're that position, it better be a reason why it's not just traveling around. You know, people say, I get it, the visibility, you can see better when this thing's up and you don't have the bucket in front of you. 
but it's not worth risking uh, hitting, you know, basically tipping the machine at all. You can still see, if you get this machine down, the machines have pretty good visibility right in front of you, so you're fine. So that's number one, is this bucket too high configuration, you're uh, driving at an angle on a hill, anything like that, where you're gonna get in trouble. My number two mistake that I've seen is dumping the dirt over the back of the bucket. And there are some classic videos on YouTube, uh, especially of open cabs, uh, that people do this. So this is just understanding what your bucket does. Now, almost all the newer machinery has a button that it'll auto level the bucket. So you'll see right now, if I just pull back in this boom, you can see outside the bucket actually is curling away. I'm not doing that, it's doing it automatically. So that keeps you from dumping this on your roof. However, the machine will not, it'll let you override it. So right now, if I, and I can't see that great up there. So if I start curling this bucket, and I'm not gonna do this as really nice newer machine. I can get a little bit off there. You can see how it's starting to go over the back. What you'll do, and I think most new operators have done this, where they accidentally curl it and they literally have a whole pile of dirt go over the back of the machine. I'm in a, obviously a sealed cab here, but it still creates a mess. You have a risk of breaking the glass up on the top. So just being careful not to over curl that bucket when you're up high. And again, the machine, if you let it, it'll manage that for you if you have that engaged. But it's also good for a newbie to turn that off. So you can actually have to, if you don't have that auto level feature, you have to get used to pulling back in your boom and opening your bucket. So you're going back and to the right on a standard control to basically open that bucket up. And if you don't know, just be lower to the ground. So that is my number two. Okay, number three has to do with turning on a site. Now, anytime you have, uh, well, tracked machines definitely, even wheeled machines, as hard as you turn on that, those skids there, that's, it's gonna tear up the ground. So the point here is picking one spot. Try not, if you're going out and you're grading an area, you're picking up material, then find the one area where you can set that up, where you can do all your turns. So like right here, if I just, if I know this is the pile that I'm going off of to load, I can slowly start turning while I'm backing, but I can also do my hard turns right here. If I do my hard turns in the same point every single time, then this is just one area I have to clean. So what you don't want to do is do a hard turn there and let's say I'm going, I'm not, if I'm not going right to that spot and I do a hard turn here, I've now tore up two different spots on there. So that's why it's really key to try and have a little bit of planning there so you know where you're going and you can make those turns. The other piece of that is don't try to avoid this motion. You know, you don't ever want to try and do those hard turns. Plan ahead. If I, you see, if I go forward here and I just slowly start doing a left turn, I'm not going to be tearing up the ground. Or if I hard, slowly start doing a right turn. So you can plan ahead and you won't end up doing as much. But now if I come back to my pile, I'm in the same spot I was before. If I had to, this is where I do it. And I'm really just tearing up the one spot. The other thing too is making sure if you're in a, most machines nowadays have a speed, uh, they're a two speed. Don't be doing, two speed is for really traveling distances. You shouldn't ever put it uh, in high speed in that area. It really bogs down when you try and do those tight turns. Those are designed when you're going in a straight line. Usually it's a trigger like on John Deere, you click that once and it'll go into a high speed. Uh, that's when you want to do that. So that kind of adds into the turning too. Okay. So that was what, number three, we're counting. Okay, number four is about attachments. So anytime you get into a skid steer, I don't care if it, uh, even if you that bucket hasn't come off, I like to verify the bucket is attached. Uh, you do not want to get into a position where, and this goes with wheel loaders, a lot of machines that you just want to check. So with the John Deere, and again, each system's a little bit different. John Deere has, if it's open, there's two little red tabs. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video here, but you'll be able to see red tabs. There's an opening there. That means that they're not engaged. It's kind of, I like the, you know, red is dead kind of thing. It's uh, bad, it's like stop. You know, if you see those, don't go. So the other way, you know, a couple ways you can test it. If you're just getting in the machine and you 
don't really want to go through the entire thing. If you just push down on that bucket on a flat surface, it's going to pop off if it's not attached. So that's one easy way, and I do that in the wheel loader too, is just pushing, put some downward pressure on the tip and see if that thing will pop out. The other way, if you really want to be thorough, go ahead and just tip it right there. And you're going to be able to see on a skid steer, very easy to see the pins. I can see on the bottom of the bucket where the pins are all the way through, um, through the bucket. Now, what that means is, so on this John Deere, if I set this thing down flat, this one, they've got a quick attach button up here, where if I just hold that and give it a little bit of power, and I can see the red on there, okay? And now I'm disconnected. So, and get good with this, you know, I tell new operator, even if you don't change out, it's good to see, like, it's a lot easier to see without the bucket or attachment on there, but I can see the pins right now, and if I just hold this lock button right now, I can see them come down and lock into the place. So you can see how they're extending beyond. And then if I push them, push the unlock, I'll see it go up. So that's where the underneath is. If you can't see on the front, there's two little, right, right now the red bars are up, that's telling me it's not engaged. If I push this, I can see the red bars actually start moving down, and that tells me it's locked. Just don't, so my lesson there is, First of all, don't trust that the previous person made it was locked on there. Make sure you're securing yourself. So right now it's unlocked. I'm gonna drive up. Shake it on there. Always make sure that bucket's tilted all the way back. And then I'm gonna give it a little bit of power and I always put my foot on the throttle a little bit. Make sure those pins and then I'm looking, I don't see red on either side. To make sure it's attached, push down on a little bit. That makes sure it's attached. And then the final thing, if I really want to be thorough, I can see the pins down below that are all the way through. So now it's attached. So that's number four, is making sure your bucket's attached. You do not want to learn that while you're uh, out loading into a dump truck or whatever, is that you don't want that bucket to fall off. So make sure it's attached. Okay, that's number four. Number five, the final one, kind of simple. Uh, it's one of those ones where, okay, I'll speak for myself. Yes, I've looked like an idiot before is if you don't, almost all skid steers have the dual arms. There's only a Volvo, JCB does a single arm with the doors on the side. But you need to make sure, if your bucket's open a little bit, like this, let's say, and you put this thing down, well, let me go a little bit more just to make sure. But let's say I think I'm down all the way. Looks good like that. The moment I try and open it, boom, I'm gonna hit the arm. You're gonna look like an idiot on the site. Or if you hit it really hard, you'll actually damage your door. But more than not, it's just, look, you look like a rookie on the site, an idiot. So make sure your bucket is always flat to the ground. That's the only way you can open the door safely. So with that, what I always recommend, first of all, make sure that bucket's curled all the way, because that way this will allow you to get this all the way down. So I can actually hear that boom. I can hear that thing come down and it's now it's all the way down. Then what I always do is I flatten my bucket last to try and get that flat. But now I know that thing's all the way down to the ground and I'll have that door will be able to go all the way open, okay? Then we're, you can see I can open it. Okay, those are my five right there. Let me park it and get on out. Okay everyone, those are my top five mistakes I've seen for new operators. Again, I'd love to hear from you. I had some other ideas too, and uh, maybe we'll do an additional video, but please comment below on top mistakes either you made, you've seen made. Uh, I really appreciate the comments, the feedback from our viewers. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you on the next one.